For decades, it drifted silently, half forgotten, half mythical, trailing its invisible path through the darkness, beyond planets, past the last breath of our solar wind, and into a realm no human eye had ever seen. Voyager 2, a fragile, aging spacecraft launched when disco ruled Earth and computers filled entire rooms, was never meant to survive this long. And yet, almost 50 years later, it's still out there, whispering secrets from the edge of existence. But recently, NASA received a transmission so precise, so unexpected, and so deeply unsettling that it made scientists question the very architecture of our cosmic neighborhood. Because Voyager 2 didn't just cross into deep space, it discovered something hiding in plain sight, a boundary sharper than a blade, a silence that wasn't quite silent, and a pattern in the chaos that no one had dared to expect. What did Voyager 2 finally reveal that we've all been ignoring? And why does it change everything we thought we knew about our place in the universe? The answers are buried in its final message, and what's behind it is far more active, far more structured, and far more dangerous than we were ever prepared to accept. Voyager 2's journey has always been one of endurance, not revelation. Launched in 1977 with a lifespan of five years, it wasn't supposed to be alive long enough to witness the outer planets, much less reach interstellar space. But through cosmic dust, radiation storms, and the freezing nothingness beyond Neptune, it kept going. And in 2018, something extraordinary happened. As it approached the theoretical edge of the solar system, its instruments didn't record a gentle decline in solar influence, like scientists had expected. Instead, the data shifted dramatically, as if the spacecraft had passed through a cosmic membrane, like opening a door into an entirely different climate. Plasma density skyrocketed, magnetic fields abruptly aligned, and cosmic radiation surged by 70%. It was a moment of revelation. What had once been assumed to be a hazy transition between solar and interstellar space was, in fact, a hard line, a border, and Voyager 2 had just crossed it. For decades, textbooks described the edge of the solar system, the heliosphere, as a fuzzy zone where the solar wind gradually weakens and merges with the interstellar medium. But Voyager 2 proved otherwise. The data revealed that the heliosphere acts more like a cocoon, pulsing, flexing and reacting to the sun's activity like a living organism. During solar maximums, it expands, pushing the galactic environment away. During minimums, it contracts, exposing our system to more radiation. This dynamic behavior meant the boundary wasn't static. It was alive. And Voyager 2, approaching from a slightly different angle than Voyager 1, found that it crossed this frontier at a different distance, 121 AU instead of 119 AU. This discrepancy wasn't random. It revealed the boundary breathes, flexes, adapts, and that changes everything. Because it means the protective bubble that shields Earth from the galaxy's violent radiation isn't permanent. It's fragile, and it's shrinking. But the most baffling discovery didn't come from radiation or plasma. It came from magnetism. As Voyager 2's instruments stabilized in interstellar space, Scientists noticed something chilling. The sun's magnetic field was nearly perfectly aligned with the interstellar magnetic field outside the heliosphere. That kind of alignment was never supposed to happen. Prevailing models predicted a chaotic interaction, a messy blend of forces clashing at awkward angles. But instead, it was clean, seamless, as if both magnetic fields had been shaped to meet. This raised haunting possibilities. Was this area of space naturally organized in this way? Had the sun carved a perfect path into the galaxy? Or, more disturbingly, was this alignment intentional? Theories erupted. Could this precise interaction zone act like a galactic filter? Or worse, could it be monitored by forces we can't yet understand? Voyager 2's data didn't confirm answers, but it asked terrifying questions. Then came the blackout. In 2019, Voyager 2, the most distant working probe in human history, suddenly fell silent. No warning, no error code, just silence. Engineers at NASA watched, helpless, as the probe went dark, more than 11 billion miles away and unreachable in real time. Hours later, it came back online, seemingly without human intervention. The cause? Officially unexplained. 
NASA attributed it to aging hardware, but buried in the telemetry were strange electromagnetic spikes, anomalies that didn't quite match known patterns. Perhaps they were the result of a passing cosmic ray burst, or perhaps they were something else, something triggered by crossing that threshold. And while mainstream scientists dismiss the idea of interstellar watchers, the timing, the alignment, and the precision of Voyager 2's discoveries have stirred whispers even inside closed-door conferences. Because what Voyager 2 detected wasn't just the edge of our sun's reach, it was the start of something else. Just weeks after Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause, the probe began receiving low-frequency fluctuations in the plasma around it, oscillations that pulsed at regular intervals. This wasn't solar wind. It wasn't cosmic radiation. These pulses were too stable, too rhythmic. Researchers expected turbulence in deep space, but instead they found consistency. A pulse every 13.2 hours, unchanging, for weeks, months. A signal with no known origin and no logical purpose. And the most disturbing part? It wasn't affecting Voyager's instruments directly, but its communication lag subtly adjusted as if being dragged, as if the medium of space itself was shifting, like something enormous just beyond our sensors was breathing, compressing and relaxing the fabric of the void. When the data was converted to sound, it resembled a heartbeat. Not mechanical, not artificial, but organic. Almost like Voyager hadn't just left the solar system, it had entered something else. While the pulse continued, Voyager 2's plasma wave instrument began detecting bursts of activity that, at first, seemed random. Sudden spikes in energy followed by lulls, but when mapped over time, the data revealed a pattern, a recursive wave, almost like a spiral, increasing in amplitude at precise intervals. This wasn't just strange, it was structured. The periodicity mirrored Fibonacci sequences, the mathematical ratio that governs everything from seashells to galaxies. Some scientists were baffled. Others whispered about embedded intelligence. Was the plasma merely reacting to the probe's presence? Or was it transmitting? A growing minority began referring to the phenomenon not as an environmental anomaly, but as a response field. Something was reacting to Voyager, and the deeper it moved, the more intense the response became. What began as noise was starting to look like language. When Voyager 2 sent back its most distant magnetometer reading yet, the numbers didn't just plateau, they inverted. The field didn't weaken, it turned. Space itself was folding in ways that defied Newtonian expectation. It was almost as if the probe had passed through a zone where time and energy flexed around it. A lensing effect, but without the mass to explain it. As engineers and astrophysicists scratched their heads, a radical idea took form. Maybe the heliopause wasn't a wall. Maybe it was a window. One way, directional. A filter that allowed signals out but dampened anything coming back in. If true, this would mean our solar system isn't just a bubble. It's shielded, perhaps deliberately. And Voyager 2 just punched a hole through it. Something on the other side might have noticed. And then, the impossible happened. Voyager 2 began transmitting telemetry logs that hadn't been recorded. Data from dates years earlier, encoded in formats it was never programmed to use. The internal memory, already stretched thin, seemed to be rewriting itself, accessing subsystems long considered dead. NASA confirmed no command was sent to reactivate these, yet suddenly, defunct processors lit up. Gyroscopes aligned with constellations Voyager was no longer near. A probe with 1970s technology began executing operations far beyond its original capacity. The data wasn't just technical, it was visual. Incoherent images, flickers, star patterns, and what looked like movement. Not from Voyager, but from around it. Blurred shapes, shadows, as if the spacecraft was capturing echoes not from now, but from someone else. Was Voyager recording real-time, or memory stored in the very vacuum of space? What if the void wasn't empty, but archived? Voyager 2 was never meant to find meaning. It was a scout, a sentinel, a whisper launched into the dark in the hope that silence wouldn't be eternal. But as it crossed the final breath of our solar system, what it showed us wasn't just data, it was denial. 
Denial of randomness. Denial of isolation. Denial of everything we assumed deep space would be. What Voyager 2 discovered isn't merely physical, it's philosophical. A wall that breathes, a field that pulses, a boundary that behaves. The structure in the plasma, the pulse in the silence, the spiral in the void. None of these things should exist, and yet they do. So what are we left with? Not a spacecraft, not a relic, but a mirror. A machine drifting into the unknown, only to find it's being observed, measured, met halfway. The thing we ignored wasn't in space, it was in us. The arrogance that assumed the stars were indifferent, that believed silence meant emptiness. Voyager 2 didn't find the edge, it found the invitation. And what lies beyond it? Perhaps not an answer, but a witness, something watching us, recording our reach, judging the precision of our machines, and the intention of our curiosity. We were so focused on listening for a voice that sounded like ours, that we missed the one already responding in a language of energy, magnetism, and time. If this shook your idea of reality, if the patterns felt too perfect, the signals too synchronized, the discoveries too scripted to be coincidence, then it's time to pay attention. Subscribe to this channel. We're not just reporting data. We're documenting a conversation that just began. Hit the bell, because the next whisper from Voyager could be the loudest sound humanity has ever heard. Share this with someone who still thinks the void is empty. Comment below. Do you think Voyager was merely reporting what it saw, or was it being shown something?